I'd like to call the order with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America, America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I have item number two, an executive session. I would enter into that on a motion if any member thought it was needed for the applications we have tonight. If not, I will proceed to item three. Okay, I do that just because if we have public, I would rather do the executive session before we get rolling, have them leave and come back. I just, that brings us to item number three, our routine applications. And I would call on the clerk, Mr. Drake. Uh, we have three routine applications. The first one is Law 3 for $500,000. I'm sorry, I'm echoing here, uh, which is an appropriation for outside legal fees. The second one is SE9 from the First Selectman's Office, $494,868, which is the balance of our insured deductible in the Collins case. And the third one is HD4, the Health Department, $15,060, which is approval to use a grant. Do I have a second on those items? I second. Items have been second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That item is carried 11 0 1. Mr. Norton is not with us tonight. He's in Nevis. Yeah, actually, yeah, strictly speaking, 11 0 0. Yeah, you're right. So, Mr. Norton sent his condolences, had this trip scheduled. Um, <laughs> he, nice he he normally goes to I believe St. Thomas and the storm hit there so he found a, he found another piece of sand and so he's he's in good shape we miss him <laughs> and um, later on when we get to either old business I'll uh, remind me to bring up a meeting schedule item that I've been working on with Mr. Raymer I don't have a dis decision yet but we'll have, we'll bring that up then our non-routine application, SE8, I would normally call for the item to be uh, moved in the committee report, but that item has been pulled. Ms. Oberlander, if you, you have the communication printed. Here it is. Oh, here we go, I'm sorry. Um, Peter Tessie has sent us a communications uh, basically saying to, he would like to postpone this item for sufficient time for the town GMS to adequately address the statements uh, we, that in the email that I've circulated from the, the GEMS uh, representative, uh, and he'd like to come back to us with that item on December 14th, if that's possible. So that item has been uh, withdrawn for at least this. Um, so we'll have our committee report and everything on that next month. Uh, is everybody okay with that? Ms. Oberlander, did you have anything? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that, you know, I think it's a great, good, good idea to resolve all the issues before we consider it as part of our condition as well and that we ask that they actually do take a good hard look at it so that we can get Byram moving forward. Okay, good. Okay, moving on. Item number four, the assessor's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the BET. I would like to present the assessor's report for November 2017. Um, currently, we are working on finalizing the grand list of 2017. Um, I will be signing that at the end of January as uh, required. Um, all our residential and commercial field work it has been completed, so all we're doing right now is just um, updating those changes into our CAMA system. Uh, the supplemental motor vehicle was sent to us by the Department of Motor Vehicles. Basically, that captures all the motor vehicles that have been registered after October 1st, 2016 and before September 30th, 2017. Those bills will be going out with the real estate, the second half real estate bills in January. Um, I don't foresee any issues as far as getting those bills out in a timely fashion. And finally, for Mr. Norton's benefit, even though he is not here this evening, we settled four residential tax appeals. Um, we now have 88 uh, appeals remaining on the 2015 grand list, so um, that's down from the 166 that we had originally. Anybody have any questions for me this evening? 88 from 2015? We had 166 originally. We have 88 remaining. So we've settled the different, yeah, those. Yes? 
Um, given the transition and the, oops, I'm getting an echo here, the tax collector's office, um, that I, I guess one of the issues that may surface is concerns about will the tax bills go out on time and mm -hmm. um, can you address that question or maybe sure. it's... I, I don't foresee any issue um, as far as getting those bills on time. Quality data prints our bills now and as long as I get the information to them in a timely fashion, usually within the first two weeks of um, December, all I have to do is give them any transfers that have happened on the real estate and I have to get them the supplemental motor vehicle. And uh, quality data will print those bills out and I don't foresee any issue as to those not going out in a timely, ma in a timely fashion. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Uh, I was going to ask the, the very same questions I was going to ask it of the controller where I thought maybe it was more appropriate, but I'm going to go ahead and pick it up with you. Um, in years past, we um, have run an ad, the tax collector has run an ad in the newspaper reminding people that they have the uh, tax obligation to pay on their real estate taxes in, uh, in, in January. Um, uh, I say an ad, a notice might be a legal, legal notice. notice. Mm -hmm. um, uh, have you any idea whether or not uh, the tax collector or anybody else has a plan to run such an ad? Well, no, but I would assume that they would. Um, he, 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 here's what's on my mind. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know exactly what's going to come out of Congress, mm -hmm. but one of the possibilities are that um, the uh, income tax, uh, the federal income tax is amended yeah. to delete to the deduction for personal property taxes. I also don't know the year to which it would apply, but it might be that it starts to apply with the tax year uh, 2018. If that's the case, I can see that there could be a considerable difference to taxpayers who wrote a check for their, uh, for their January taxes in December, mm -hmm. making it a deduction on their 2017 income tax, as opposed to being a deduction which is lost altogether if the things that I just spoke about actually happened. Because of that, I, I, I would like it not to happen that um, the bills didn't go out in December to cue people that they might want to pay it. And I would like it not to happen that this year for the first time we don't put the legal notice in the newspaper because I don't want the criticism from the taxpayers who lost the deductibility if these things that I was speculating on actually happen. So I'd be grateful if between your office and the controller's office, um, care is taken to be sure that in fact the January bills really do go out in December. The earlier in December, the better. And irrespective of whether they do or don't, that we're careful to once again publish the legal notice that we spoke about, to, again, to curtail the upset that we get from our taxpayers um, in the event that they neglect to pay their taxes in December. Fair enough. Okay, okay. Yep. thank you. Um, I just I wanted to follow up on uh, your discussion about the sketch verification project. Mm -hmm. um, in your report, it indicates that um, 888 properties have been reviewed. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if there have been any results from that review and if you can share whether there are significant changes to property values for those properties. Those are 888 assessments that are going to go up. To capture that amount is hard for us to do because let me let me back up and, and explain exactly what happened. We did a flyover back in 2013. That's the pictometry. That's what we originally used. So there ha there were a number of reasons why when they did the flyover and we did our sketch verification, then we overlaid our our sketches. That there's a number of re uh, issues that could have changed those sketches, one of which was building permits pulled. Now, when we first got this project, we, th we found that there was well over 2,000 um, errors in our sketch verification problem, partly because there were a number of building permits pulled in 2014 and 15. So once we, once we went through that, we found that there were about 888 that were specifically, no, they didn't have a building permit attached to them. I can't, there's no way I can go through my ProVal system and capture how much we are adding, taking uh, with the, uh, adding for those 888 properties without just 
going through them and manually adding 800, and, and that would be kind of time consuming. What I can tell you that has ultimately happened is that I'm pretty confident that we have now captured and we have a basis from which to go from going forward as to what properties have changed. The next flyover is going to be, in, it was done in 2016. We're going to eventually get that data. And once that data is is available to us, we will then see what properties changed from 2013 to 2016. And then we'll, we'll, we'll make that and correspond that to make sure that all those properties that have changed, we actually have a building permit and we went out to that property. So that's how we're going to, to follow this procedure forward. The next flyover, um, I think the 2016 one was done for free. We're only getting flyovers, we're only supposed to do flyovers every five years, but if we keep on getting the state to do one, and if they do do them, we'll grab this information and we'll be able to continually update our, um, our assessment records and verify that with what's actually there. Unfortunately, I can't tell you exactly what, what value we added for those 888 houses. No. The purpose really was to understand is there, are we seeing that there are, are changes, that there's data that came out of the process that's yes. going to impact the valuations. Mm -hmm. and most We're going to get some people them. that are going to come in and say, why on earth did my assessment go up? this year, and we're going to have to say, well, I'm sorry, but we went out there when we saw that you have this two-story addition or a garage or whatever it was that we have not been taxing you on. We're probably going to get some concerns about that, I'm sure. However, um, it's, it's finally brought, I think, everybody up onto the same page. We're not going to go back and and find out when those those assessments were. We're just going to go forward and say, okay, this is what you had as of October 1st, 2017, and this is how we're going to be taxing you. Okay. So I move to approve the assessor's uh, office report. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? 11 0. Brings us to item number five, the controller's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, BET members. Just as a, uh, before I open up the questions, just as a follow-up to the uh, tax collector transition uh, questions, I've gotten a couple of emails. The, um, uh, my staff and I are going to meet with uh, Howard uh, Richmond and Larry Simon next Tuesday, and uh, I'll be bringing along my treasurer. And uh, the, the issues that we'll be trying to address next, uh, next week, at least uh, to get uh, the tax collector elect on board is, the treasurer still has issues with the non-sufficient funds. We're not clear, clearing them out as quick as we should be. It's impacting the bank reconciliation. We still have issues with the credit card uh, uh, chargebacks. Uh, so then two topics with the treasurer will be addressed. We're going to bring the uh, chief accountant, Mary Walzakowski. Uh, we're going to need to address the refund uh, issue, which is still not being addressed since last April, and they keep getting larger and larger. They're in the hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And also, we're going to bring in, um, Roland has volunteered to come to, to provide any budgetary uh, assistance, although the budget has probably been transferred or transmitted to the uh, first selectman. Uh, I don't know how we're going to handle that as far as who, whose budget is going to be, because the January 1st or January 8th, or January 1st, I think, in the case of the tax collector, uh, you have a, a budget that's submitted by the prior tax collector in the current uh, year for the 18-19, uh, and then you have a tax collector whose budget has already been submitted. So I don't know procedurally how we'll deal with that. Um, however, Roland is the liaison and is, is the or enabler is the person who ha uh, helps the selectman's office get the budget done every year. So we'll have flexibility in that area before it gets to the uh, BET uh, at, at the end of January. So, does anybody have any questions that are tax collector related uh, before we get into the controller's report? No? Go ahead. Uh, no, I'll open. Any questions on the controller's report? Pete, I had a question on the cash handling task force. Um, I don't, maybe this is too early in the process, but will you be hiring, using like an outside accounting firm in terms of identifying best practices, or how do you go about doing that? No. The, uh, I had a conversation, it's early. Mm -hmm. The answer is no uh, to that question, but uh, the, the uh, 
leaders uh, will be uh, the first selectman, Tassie, Mary Pepe from HR, Ben Brandon and myself. But as I discussed with um, Peter, uh, I'll be reaching out to the expertise of my staff. Kathleen Murphy and Natasha Yemitz get involved with a lot of the cash handling practices. They, they send out uh, notices that, uh, for each year for compliance. So in my area, we'll be reaching for the expertise of the day-to-day -day, uh, people. But we're, we're not going to, to outside people. Uh, and, and I can't answer when the first meeting will be, but the goal is to have it done within six months. I, I'm just wondering, my understanding is that the external auditors are the team that's working with Greenwich this year is green. They're, they're quite new, most of them. Is that correct? Yes. Uh, is there anyone on their team who is seasoned, who is working with them to guide them in this I, I, I must say I'm, I'm really f surprised that for a town like Greenwich, we would have a new group that is so inexperienced that it's possibly going to take longer for them to complete their work. Well, uh, I, I could answer that, uh, but the requirement is from the Office of Policy and Management that you have to have the audit uh, to them by December 31st. We'll be way before December 31st. The goal is to have it uh, accepted uh, by the BET on December 14th. The move was prompted by the BET Audit Committee. The BET Audit Committee required that the partners transfer out and they rotate. So if the reason that we got the team that we got was the, uh, they rotated partners. The, the, it's not necessarily the partner that's green, it's the, the kids that are out of college that work the day to day, don't have much municipal experience. And where they're getting their training from is Roland Geiger, Mary Walzakowski, uh, Kathleen Murphy, who's, who've been through this for, in my case, dozens of years, Roland's dozens of years. Uh, so they're, they're actually guiding them through uh, the, the process. But what you're saying is that the the partners actually are seasoned. They're not. Oh yes. Okay. But the partners that's... the partners don't come in until the all the field work is At done. At the end. And actually, they they don't get in. Uh, I work uh, with the uh, the manager to put the CAFR together. So the partners don't get into the very end when they have to go over the CAFR and then they go to peer review with the the other partners. Mm -hmm. So it's and we've we've actually. Last year was a bad year with a seasoned uh, group. The problem we had last year was that there was turnover. We lost uh, our most valuable uh, manager who was there five years, and then there was, we had Bloom for five years, and she was there the five years before, and she quit before the, uh, the, the assignment was actually over last year. So last year was actually a rougher year. Uh, with It's the turnover that hurts us more than anything. Thank you. Anyone else? Can I get a motion to accept the controller's report? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? That is carried. Item number six, treasurer's report. I move to accept the treasurer's report. Second. Moved and seconded to accept the treasurer's report. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That item is carried. Can't go to the pages as fast. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Item number seven, BT Standing Committee reports. Um, obviously, Mr. Norton is here. Um, the Audit Committee has a, a special meeting. I believe it's Monday. We're working with that annual audit, and our job is to get that completed and get us to approve it before year end as per state statutes on that. So we'll do that. Uh, liaison reports. Nothing. Special project teams. Special projects team. I'd just say that the grant commitment letter for the new Leb School came today. We knew it was approved, but the final letter came, and um, our friend Mr. Welko is very conservative. He won't sign anything till it's double, triple covered and completely locked down. So it now is. Anyway, that's good news. Good. 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 Um, 
Item 10, discussion, uh, we can combine these if you want. Discussion of the Finance Department Fiscal 1819 Budget and Operational Plan and discussion of the Assessor's Office Fiscal 1819 Budget Plan. In the past, our liaisons normally just do this and it gets submitted off into the Office of the First Selectman and it gets bound in for the report. Um, this year, I just, I put them on for discussion items. If anybody had any questions, I know everybody has them, but I just, if there were any questions or comments before why we have um, the assessor and the controller here. Does anyone have any of that? Um, Ms. Weiser, followed by Mr. Raymer. Sure. I had a question for Lauren, and it's I, related to your achievements, I guess, for 16, 17. And I just wanted to understand what this meant. It said the bullet, and I don't think the pages are numbered, continue to develop and improve the assessor's administration system procedures to ensure adequate audit checks and supervision of changes to the tax levy through the departmental internal audit process, it became apparent that additional review of additions and deductions to the grand list were necessary. Additional review by supervisory staff has been established. Can you just explain? I, I didn't understand what that meant. Um, we, our administrative system is our quality data system. Mm -hmm. And basically, I have the authority as the assessor if there is a correction to be made on a motor vehicle or in real, a parcel of real estate. I actually have to um, go in, change the assessment. In order to do that, I need proof. Okay. I can't just take someone's mm -hmm. motor vehicle, for instance, off the tax rolls sure. without having a plate receipt or something. Um, so now what we do is I sign them all okay. and make okay. sure that there's the requisite proof is attached to the, uh, to the CFC because when the auditors do come in, they can just randomly pick anyone they want. Mm -hmm. I just need to make sure that when we've made a change, there's a valid, there's a valid proof. Okay, mm -hmm. that explains it. All right, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, to the chair, if I can, um, what's the point in time then that these are uh, submitted? Did you say to the first selectman's office or to the budget director's office? Uh, when do these get submitted? Can they be? Stand by. I'll give you an answer. Peter, what's the answer? December first. It's December first, but as I said previously. Roland is, in, is really in charge of the, uh, of the audit as far as any changes. So if, if, if this was submitted and somebody saw an error anywhere, you know, in assessors or the finance, he's got all the way up with Peter till he transmits to the, uh, the BET at the end of January. So it's December 1st is uh, when the budgets are, are due in the first selectman's office. I can't tell you if, if that is actually what's happening down there. And then the operation plans were this last Friday, right? The operation plans had to be into the uh, selectman's office by last Friday. I had one or two members. Uh, I happened to be the liaison uh, to the assessor's office. I had one or two uh, uh, questions that were put that I really wasn't sure of the answers to. Um, uh, so there's still an opportunity for me to raise those questions with the assessor. Um, and if a correction were to be necessary, we could quickly make the correction through Roland's office uh, if we do so in the next week or two. Yeah, as, as long as there's coordination between Lauren and Roland so that uh, if, if you, you make a change through Roland, Lauren knows about it or and vice the other versa. way around. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. While, while we're on this, I, I was going to ask, are you available after Audit Monday for because normally this is done with the, the liaisons for the, the various uh, Sundays, but this year because we're we're running into just time constraints and everything going on, I just put them there for a general discussion. I mean, are you available Monday? It, it's no, no. a Witherall meeting. We have another meeting. Mm -hmm. We we have the Nathaniel Witherall Strategic Planning Committee meeting uh, right after the audit committee meeting. So yes, I'm available. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Anything else on those items? Okay. So, sorry. Uh, Can I? I just wanted to make one comment because um, I know that um, in some sense we got some criticism last year as we talked went through the budget process in February, and we're talking to departments about efficiencies and goal setting. And when you set goals, you normally have dates for uh, when a specific goal might be uh, completed and targets, and these operation plans present a lot of really good information, but don't move us to that next step of getting closer to talking about some of the issues that we raise in February. And so I don't know, don't believe that between now and tomorrow 
things can be dramatically changed. But I, I would like us to think about how these operations plans are stated and maybe our departments can be um, a, a, a lead for how other town departments might phrase these in the future, considering those things. But maybe we can make some changes even in this year, working through the liaisons to talk to uh, the controller and the assessor on, on maybe tightening up the goals, talking about those efficiencies or identifying that they run the tightest ship in the de building and there aren't any. But um, I think that those should be considered as, as these plans get finalized. I think the, I, I agree, but I think the original intent of the operation plans was for the other departments to read to, to kind of get a sense. For us, this, these are very easy for us. This is what we're dealing with this all the time. But, I agree, but I think that the timing is to get, go ahead, just to, to add, get the added comment. Uh, I can't remember who, who asked me, uh, maybe it was Jill today. The, my operations plan used to be around 13 pages. And it's two years ago, uh, Melissa Jones, I think her name was, I got it back and it was like five pages. And I asked what happened. And they said that they, and I don't know who that they are, there was a lot of complaints that there was too much information in the operations plan in total. So there was a directive a couple of years ago, and, and I don't have a problem with it, to scale it back and to include less information. Now, I think where you're going, are you going th towards the budget guidelines and the cost? Yeah, I, we had this conversation a week ago, and I went back into the budget guidelines, and uh, I looked at it in the, the the comment on page six, number nine, is that as requested in last year's guidelines, budgetary organizations should clearly identify cost-saving projects that are either proposed or already included in the budget request that produce material reductions in expenses. Now, the, the, as far as my department, I won't speak for Lauren, we, number one, we're always out there looking for revenue enhancements. And the example, two examples that we currently have is the CD program and the uh, iCard implementation uh, program. In the area of efficiencies, I have two projects that I'm currently working at. And one of them is to put it in a cash, a cash counting machine. There's no cost savings there. What there is is an efficiency that I don't have two clerks going out every single day of the working year to the bank in the safety issue. And then the, sec the second one was the implementation of the uh, at-fault program, which we can't quantify the cost savings. And, uh, and, and I agree with, with your comments is the, where, where I'm challenged is, is I, don't, I don't know how I can incorporate that into my scaled back operations plan. But I'm welcome to suggestions, and we're the smaller departments, and where you really can find the cost savings are in the police, in the fire, in the Board of Education. So any suggestions you have, and uh, you, you know, we're, we'll revise the operation plans or add to it. So that was just my comment to, to Leslie's comments. Tarkington? Uh, just to add something further, you know, when we looked at the assessor's office um, operational plan, um, we did ask Lauren to review it with her goals and her performance review of what she was to accomplish over the next year. And she did and made some um, changes to make sure it corresponded with those goals to be for the consistency. And I think that's another thing that we've talked about, Leslie, is making sure that the, um, you know, department heads goals correspond with the operating plan. So at least in the case of the assessor's office, um, she did review it and um, modified it accordingly. Okay. Okay, moving on. So I, I would expect we, the liaison should have that done before our next meeting and can report back. I, I wouldn't see any delay with that. Um, old business. Um, I don't know if this is old business or not. Uh, December 13th is a Wednesday, 3 o'clock, new member BET orientation. That will be a posted public meeting. It has to be because we're all there. Um, obviously, uh, we want to invite all of the new members. We want our current members. Um, you'll, you'll need your... Uh, BT policy manual at that meeting. You'll need a, a copy of the charter. You should have it all electronically. Um, 
Uh, we'll, we'll probably have some refreshments at that, so we'll have that. Under old business, our January meeting, um, we have a conflict with the state party uh, elections, the caucuses, the RTC and the DTC caucuses. Uh, I will put down, I have a range when I think the Republican ones are, and I think Mr. Raymer has a range of when you think the Democratic ones are, and there's a conflict with our current meeting. Yeah, um, uh, I, I made a very specific request, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, we uh, are going to be conducting the Democratic caucuses at, at, in, at 12 locations on Wednesday the 17th at 8 p.m. Uh, and I made a request, uh, could possibly the BET meeting, which is scheduled for 6.30 that same evening, be brought forward to be at 5.30 that evening, which I think is a time adjustment that we've done from time to time before. Okay. So you, your, your idea would be to move it to? 5.30 on the same day that it's presently scheduled for, in other words, just an hour earlier. Okay. I don't know what the length of the agenda will be, but I'm thinking that a meeting that begins at 5.30 should, should likely not have difficulty being clear in time for people to attend an 8 o'clock meeting the same evening. And I, I reported in caucus that I think we are the week before, which might affect our other committee, but we will, uh, Roland, can you make a note of that? Let's just, uh, if, if, if there's no conflict, we'll just change the starting time. So we'll get that taken care of. Uh, moving on, approval of our minutes, October third, October twenty third, regular meeting. So I'm so moved. The October twenty third minutes. Discussion. All those in favor? Wait, wait. I'm sorry. One edit. I'm sorry. On page two of the minutes, I'm sure I'm on the right one. The um, October twenty third minutes, um, and under non routine applications, SE six. Uh, the the second sentence should read, Mr. Lash um, remarked that the Budget Committee referred this item to the full BET. And, and to delete the voting reference. Okay. All those in favor of that change? Yes, aye. 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 Okay. Any other items on our October 23rd? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. 700, our November 1st special meeting. So no, Mr. Chairman. Oh, sorry, Mr. Chairman. I have a correction, if I may. On the November first. On the November first. Go right ahead. Um, uh, if you read the motion the way it's couched, uh, it, it's a little hard to tell if the motion itself purported to be conditioned on acceptance by the BET of OSF approval, et cetera. Reads right now. Mr. Drake made a motion to release the condition. Uh, 32 million 061, et cetera, for new Lebanon school construction upon receipt and acceptance by the BET of, it sounds as if we're still imposing the condition. Mr. Drake's motion was to release the condition, period. I would uh, end the sentence after the word construction, deleting the words on the receipt and acceptance by the BET of one OSF approval for reimbursement of construction of the construction project and two construction bids for the project. I would delete those words. I would leave. Mr. Raymer seconded, and the board voted 1200 to approve the motion. Discussion? That seems fine to me. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. With that correction, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Drake, do you have anything? I do. Uh, uh, this is the first BET meeting after the election, so I'd like to congratulate the colleagues, the Democrat colleagues, on, on their success. Uh, I think that it's always been Mike's role as chairman to cooperate with the party, the, uh, your party, and to make decisions in the best interest of the town, and I'm sure that you will too. So we look forward to working with you, and, and we'll hand this over. I think Mike has never hit anyone with it, and he's never, I don't think he's ever, ever, tapped, it, ever tapped it in four years, but we look forward to working with you uh, in a cooperative manner in the best interest of the town. Good, he's, congratulations. He's got one more to use that weapon. Yeah. What? He's got one more to use that I can do a lot better than that. <laughs> I actually well, dropped that once, and it really disturbed somebody who was speaking, so I never touched it again. <laughs> I, um, I um, A couple things. Um, 
we've been working on IT, and I will tell you that either at our organizational meeting or our training, I, I, I've come to learn a lot about our town emails and our devices. As you know, we've been working for almost a year to replace our devices. They're outdated, they're about six years old. The IT had told us to hold off. There was a new operating system going into place. Uh, we waited for the operating system. Now we're given the green light to go, so I figure I gotta spend the money before I can't. Um, but our, to make a long story short, for those of you who ever have switched out a phone, the town has a very, very sophisticated system now. And I'll go into it at our orientation meeting about when you put a, your, a town email on one of your devices, you actually authorize the town to go into your device, which means as much of a firewall as we have. There's some issues, and I, I went with and did the phone upgrade, and I didn't realize it until this, because you just can't add your town email. The, the town has to go do it, and you have to authorize them. It was a very interesting lesson, especially on FOI issues and uh, hacking issues. So uh, I'll, I'll leave that till we get the new devices, and we'll... When we do that, we normally have a training session because they get preloaded with lots of documents for us. The charter, municipal code, all of that stuff gets loaded in for, for us. So um, I've been emailing back and forth with Ms. Oberlander, so we're just, we have to wait. And I think the IT director is going to see Peter for money, so we'll see if, how that goes for the new devices. But other than that, um, it's Thanksgiving week. Everybody's home, well, family's home from school, so it's time to go home before it Shopping occurs more at my house because my daughter's home. So I wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Happy and Thanksgiving to you, Mr. Chairman, I move we adjourn. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstaining? Good. Happy Thanksgiving. Good night, everyone.